Hello everybody, welcome back to the BGMD Development Channel. Today, we are going to do a coding tutorial video, which we haven't done in a very long time, and I very much apologize for the delay in the differences between, I think we're on episode like 20 or something, I don't remember. It's been very long, I don't even remember where we are, and I do really apologize for that. I'm gonna try to get more of these out uh, soon. Um, you know, I've been very busy with school. The server review videos are really, really easy to make. Um... And it's these are these are a little difficult to make because it takes time for me to test the code, make sure it works and stuff. So that's just how it works. So we're gonna go ahead and update one of our older videos in episode six. We use this MPC lib plugin, but it has changed since I last made this video. So we're gonna go through creating an MPC and stuff using this uh, lib plugin or MPC lib plugin and with its new methods and everything since it's updated its API over time. So we're just gonna go ahead and get straight into it. And all you have to do first is go to this page, which I'll leave down in the description. You can either go to the release pages and download it there, or you could go to Spigot. So just download the newest one. Um, you can download, the API would be just for the coding part of it. The plugin includes it as well, and it's also going to be shaded in. So we're just gonna download this newest MPC dash plugin and make sure you keep it. And we're gonna um, just download it. And then inside of our projects, folder um, instead of going through and putting this like on a desktop or something I'm just gonna right click my project click new directory and we can name this like dpens or something it doesn't really matter what you name it and then you're gonna go ahead and drag in your download here into that folder press ok you can press add so you can see in the last um, time we worked on this we already have a class that we were using uh, for our MPC class, our MPC manager. I'm gonna go ahead and completely redo this from the beginning for this video so new people can understand how we created this and everything. And I'll go over the new methods and stuff. So the first thing you're gonna have to go is to your project structures and your libraries. If you already have this old one from the 1.42 version, make sure to remove it or any older versions and go ahead and import the newest one and you can just find it in your dpens folder and press OK and apply and you can see it's gone ahead and applied but you can see we're gonna get errors because this is the old way to do it not the new way so we're gonna go ahead and do it the new way now alright so if we have this class before what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just delete this whole class because uh, this is an old class which we did back in episode number six and we're just gonna recreate it and I'm gonna recreate it for you so we're gonna go ahead and right click press new Java class and we'll name it NPC manager it doesn't really matter what you name it but just for uh, this video, I'm going to name it NPC Manager. Make sure you implement Listener like we've done in the last few videos um, because we are going to put some events in this class um, and it's going to need the ability to be registered as a listener. Now, the first thing we want to do is we were going to do a private and hub and then hub or hub would be um, actually, it's not going to be hub, it's going to be main and then main or whatever your main class is named. So down here you can see our main class is named main. Normally you would make this whatever the plugin um, main thing is like um, if you were if your plugin was based around bedwars your main class would be named bedwars or something like that. Then we're gonna actually get the npc lib so we're gonna do npc lib and you're gonna just import the npc lib and then you can just put it npc lib like that because we're gonna call these down there. Then this is where we're gonna actually put our npcs so we're just gonna put npcs here and we're not gonna worry about that yet because we haven't created npcs then we're gonna actually get the class name here and it's gonna be npc manager because that's the class and then we're gonna do we're gonna go main and then main because we're gonna go ahead and connect to our main class we're gonna go this dot main and then that's gonna equal main just like that we're gonna do this dot npc lib equals new and then npc lib which is calling the api we have and then put main inside of that and then you're just gonna do load and this is gonna be what we're gonna actually put down below we actually haven't made this yet so it's just gonna error you don't have to worry about this right now and then we're gonna register the event and we're gonna do uh, bucket dot get plugin manager I can't type today because I'm shifted over my seat slash register events and make sure you do events and then do this and then main or whatever your main class is named. This is gonna error because we actually haven't made it yet and that's what we're gonna actually make right now. So the next thing we're gonna do is create a public void or private void, I'm sorry, private void and we're gonna name it load because that's gonna load all our NPCs. We're gonna put nothing in there yet. I'm just gonna get the rest of the class ready and then we'll come back and add it into there. The next thing we're gonna need is we're gonna actually need to call an on NPC interact event because this is gonna allow us to detect when an NPC is hit and when we can run a command with it. So the next thing we're gonna have to do is an event handler because this is an event. You're gonna do public void 
and you can name it like on um, NPC interact on NPC interact and then it's going to be an NPC interact event which is coming from that API so it's not a default spigot API it was created inside of this uh, dependency here and then you're going to do player player so you're going to get the player equals the event dot get who clicked and that will be your player and you can import player from bucket dot uh, player and then this is where we're going to actually put our NPCs after so we're going to put a little note here saying uh, detect when players hit an NPC and do something so we're going to do something here in a moment we're just not going to do it yet now we're going to actually create our final thing we're going to need for this video and that's another event handler and that is going to be a public void and it's going to be on join or an on join event and it's going to be a player join event um and you can just do event like this and this is going to just um what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and spawn the npcs for players once they join the server so that's what's going to happen here so we're just going to put the note spawn npcs when player joins the server so that's going to happen down here so now that we have all of our things set up and what we're going to do the first thing we're going to do is create an npc so we're going to start by going back up to where we say npcs here and we're going to create an npc and it's going to be a private npc and we're going to name it like game lobby npc or something like that and that's all you have to put to get your npc created and just import the npc from the api class just like that now that's all you have to do at the top of the class for now you can see it's great because it's not being used but it will be used momentarily then we're going to go down to our load function down here and this is where we're going to actually get the skin id now the skin id will come from name mc and i'll explain how you can do this in a moment but i'm just going to go over the code and i'll show you how you can change it later on so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take create an integer which is going to be your skin id and um, your skin id will be a random number you'll get from um name mc i believe it is and i'll go over how to get that in a moment but it's going to be i was going to do an example of 277513 which is a skin i used when i was testing this video and then this is where you're actually going to create the npc so you're going to do mine skin factor dot fetch skin from ice um id sync and then it's going to be skin id which is actually going to get the id and then you're going to do skin just like that out and then down so you're going to put an arrow out bracket down and it will create this little nice thing here and this is where we're actually gonna create the NPC so then you're gonna go and use this name up here and it's game lobby NPC and then it's gonna equal NPC lib dot create NPC and then you're gonna put inside of here you're gonna do arrays dot as list and then inside of here is where you're gonna put the um, the name tag above the NPC or whatever text you want above for my chat for my example I'm gonna do chat color dot gold plus and then I'm gonna do like game lobbies or something like that because that will create that and then if you want to add a second line you can go ahead and add a comma and then that's on your second line and then you could do like chat color dot gray plus and then like um, click to connect or something like that and then just make sure you add the to the colon at the end or dot whatever you call that thing at the end um so that's pretty much how you make the name of it now we're actually going to create it and put where we want it in the world now since we don't have coordinates i'm going to put it at some random height in some random world and we can tp there and change it later so you're going to do game lobby dot np game lobby npc dot set location and this is going to be a new location which is going to be a bucket location and you're going to do bucket dot get world and then you're going to do or get worlds i'm sorry and then you're going to do uh dot get zero just like that and then you're going to do comma and put your coordinates so if we wanted to spawn at 100 uh 70 100 you would do that just like that and then you're going to put the yaw so i'm going to put yaw and pitch at zero zero and then just put the end like that and that's all you have to do to set the location people would stop calling me that would be great so you can set the x y z locations the yaw and pick just like that in the settings here now you can set items if you want to set items all you have to do is game lobby npc or whatever your npc is called set item and then you're going to do npc slot and then if you want it to be the main hand or something you could put main hand and then you do a new item stack 
And then inside of here, it's material, whatever you want them to hold. In my case, I'm going to have them hold an anvil. Put two dots at the end. There you go. Perfect. Just like that. That's all you need to do there. Then, to actually give them the NPC skin, you're going to do set skin. And then all you have to do is skin, because that's what we're getting from up here, from mine skin factor. Two dots. And then, finally, all we have to do is actually create the thing. Game lobby NPC dot create just like that and we are done with this part of our code if you want to change this go ahead you can do whatever you want with it now we're going to go down to our on npc interact event down here and we're going to actually get so we're going to do if event dot get npc dot or equals whatever your npc is named in my case it's game lobby npc we're going to do something in my case uh, make sure you put equals equals or that won't work um, and then in my case, I'm just going to have it send the player a message. So we're going to do player dot send message chat color dot red or some color. This is a message when you click me or something, something like that. So when you click, when a player clicks the game lobby NPC, it will send them this message. Then how do we actually give these players and spawn these uh, NPCs to the players? Well, down in our on join event down here, you're going to do a bucket dot get scheduler because we're going to actually delay the scheduling or uh, delay the... Uh, spawn of them so it doesn't glitch out when the player spawns so we're gonna set up a scheduler which is gonna delay it and um, we're gonna do schedule delayed um, task just like this and you're gonna get your instance from your um, main plugin so in my case it's uh, main dot get plugin comma and then you can do um, we'll do this two more of those the little uh, line again and down so make sure to just quickly fix that so you're going to do bucket bucket server get scheduler uh, scheduler sync delayed task main dot get plugin just do this little thing here the thing and then down here and then this is where you're actually going to put in uh your delay and everything over here so my delay will be we're going to do a 60 delay the reason we're going to do 60 is because sometimes it glitches out if it's too short so we're just going to put the delay as a 60 just like that that's all you have to do then you're going to actually schedule the spawning of it so you're going to do bucket dot get scheduler and you're going to actually do dot run um and it's going to be dot run task and you're going to once again get your main instance from your main class and then you're going to do comma just like we did above with the arrow but this time you're going to do the game lobby npc dot show and then in here you're going to do e dot get player just like that put the two dots at the end thingy and you are done so pretty much what this is doing down here is it's delaying the task of spawning the npc to showing it to the player so showing the game lobby npc for a delay of 60. the reason we do this is to keep it from messing up and not showing up correctly and all of that you can change this delay how you like in this file so there we go we have successfully completed our npc class now you can just build your artifacts but make sure before you build your artifacts actually make sure you go to project structures to your artifacts and make sure you're exporting the correct um npc plugin so make sure you're extracting it into your file so extracted plugin 2.4.1 otherwise it won't actually work so then you're going to go ahead and rebuild or build your artifacts and get into your server i'm going to go ahead and hop into the server i'll be right back all right, so I've gone ahead and teleported to the location which we put inside of our uh, code here. So you can see our code is at 170, 100. So in game, I have teleported to 170, 100, and he is floating above water, which is perfectly fine. No big deal with that. And if you click it, you can see this mess. This is a message when you click me. So you can see it successfully created the name we wanted. It's holding the anvil. It's holding everything and all of that. So now I'm going to go ahead and hop over and show you how you can create and change the skin of this player through the skin renderer. Earlier I said name MC, but actually it's called mindskin.org. And um, you can click gallery and find a skin you wish to use for your NPC. All you have to do is click it. And you're going to copy this code from up here in the URL. Go back into your project. Just switch that with the skin ID. Go ahead and rebuild your project. And then once I go ahead and restart the server, you'll see that the skin has changed. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Drop the file in. Stop the server. Restart it. And you'll see that the skin is now that new skin from the website. So... Um, that's as easy it is to get skins to create these NPCs so easy so you can see there is an error and um, it seems like it was something with my player but it went ahead and spawned anyway I do apologize for the error um, not exactly sure that maybe something else I'm thinking uh, player login event blah 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 call event 
Not exactly clear what that's from. It doesn't seem... Let me go ahead and restart once more. Maybe it was something with protocol lib or something causing an issue. Um, I'll just go ahead and restart and we'll see what happens. And I'll let it restart fully this time. There we go. So yeah, there's no error. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. So there is a slight delay. Like we said, there's a 60 second delay in spawning the NPC. And um, I think there may be a glitch with this skin or something since it's not spawning correctly. But it did spawn for a moment. I'll go ahead and rejoin and see it again. Um, come on, game. Don't do this to me right now. This is tested and worked perfectly fine. There he goes. So there's the game lobby's NPC. You can see the skin changed for what it is online. And you can see it's the same thing. Um, not exactly sure why it's disappearing like that. I think it may be something with my Minecraft or something. Uh, it worked fine when I was testing this, so don't exactly worry about that. But anyway, this code's on GitHub. The link's in the description. You can use it if you want. Hopefully, this helps open your eyes on how to do this and how to change up this stuff and everything. Um and use it all and all of that stuff so of course if you want to switch to skin id just go to the website of mindskin.org and copy that id up in the top of the screen up there that will be the id for the skin in here and this code's all on github i'll leave the link to both the npc lib github and this um, code class thing i made here on github as well thank you so much for watching my name is noodles a bunch more of these videos coming soon thank you so much see you next time hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey.